May the force be with you. Welcome to the Multiplayer Gaming Podcast. Today we are going to be doing a deep dive of Respawn Entertainment's Star Wars Jedi Survivor. I am your host, Paul, and joining me, he's known as the Jar Jar Binks of the podcast, <laughs> it's Josh. I hate you, Paul, so much. <laughs> Dude, we had a conversation. You said no, you wanted no. to be a Sith, I, all right. and arguably, uh, yes, he is. Darth Jar Jar. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, so for everybody that's listening, we had a conversation <laughs> right before recording, and Paul said, Josh, I'm not sure you're going to like how I intro you. And I said, if mm-hmm. you intro me as anything other than a Sith, I'm going to be mad. And then the second Jar Jar, I just rolled my eyes and well, well done, Paul. Well done. We've got some fan fiction where he's a Sith. Yeah. It, it counts. <laughs> All right. And then joining me and Josh, don't call him a Padawan or a guest host because he's now here to stay. He's been given the rank of Jedi Master or permanent host. It's Ryan. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ryan, we're very excited to have you here as a permanent third here with me and Josh. We really love having a third person on the show. Guest hosting's been a ton of fun, but we thought, why not put a ring on that finger and make it official? <laughs> that's a Mary. That's a Mary there. Oh, there you go. Now, now, Ryan, Sith or Jedi is the question. Oh, Sith. All right, good. So yeah. The Empire did nothing yeah. wrong. And we're all, Dude, they all were just the trying to bring page. peace to the galaxy, guys. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> they did do that. All right. So we do have a little bit of housekeeping here before we jump into our deep dive. You guys know what my favorite thing on this show is. That's introducing new Patreon supporters. And oh boy, we got one here this week because someone signed up with legendary status. So we want to give a very special thank you to Skippy. Skippy! <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Skippy. Thank uh, you. Skippy has picked their legendary game already, too, which I am actually pretty pumped for. So I, I maybe we won't spoil it just yet. But uh, it is a game that we did cover on a Twig episode uh, and is a game that I have a lot of interest in. And it's a brand new release. It which is, is a brand new release. So that will be fun. <laughs> yeah, Skippy was on top of it. Absolutely. And we do also want to give a thank you to current legendary supporters Red Letter and Kidaclism, along with epic supporters Ace of Shame, Casmon, Michael the Butler, Yoda, Papa Thunderfist, Romelia, and Master Wayne 01. Yeah. Obviously, we can only do this show because of you guys. So thank you very much for your support. And then, Josh, I believe you have a review someone left the show that you want to read. I love reviews so much. And anytime you leave us a review, I love you too. And this review comes in from the legendary Marble Madness. And it is titled, definitely not overrated, five stars. (laughs) And it says, hands down, this is the best video game podcast out there. I've heard other gaming podcasts where everything they say is F this and F that. And it just sounds trashy. Paul and Josh and now Ryan are able to speak passionately and informatively about gaming while keeping it family friendly. They always do an amazing job of breaking down the latest games and gaming news, but they also answer the tough questions like, are the Beatles overrated? Are waffles or pancakes the better breakfast food? Is Katana one word or two? Is Pokemon a video game? What are you waiting for? Start listening to this podcast now. Now it's time to find out if Josh is like Ron Burgundy in front of a teleprompter. <laughs> Elite, dangerous, and forespoken are phenomenal games. Waffles are better than pancakes. Stardew Valley is better than Outer Wilds. My name is Josh, and I approve this message. Stay classy, fellow gamers. <laughs> now, now, Marble Madness's real name is actually Josh. So that, just to clarify, that wasn't like me leaving a review or anything either. So. <laughs> oh, I love it. I'm Ron Burgundy. Yeah. Burgundy? <laughs> Who typed a question mark on the teleprompter? Oh, thank you so much, Marble Madness. Obviously, thank you for being a legendary supporter. Thank you for leaving a review. We love when you guys leave reviews. It helps other people find the show. It's a huge help. So if you haven't left one already, please do so. Or if you're using Spotify, make sure to click on five stars and make sure to hit that follow button. That way you guys don't miss any episodes that we release. All right. Well, I think we're done by way of housekeeping. Let's optimize our game files for a full 60 seconds (laughs) and deep dive Star Wars Jedi Survivor. (laughs) All right, guys, here's a description of the game from Wikipedia, because the one on Steam is pretty bad. A sequel to Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order 2019, the game takes place five years after the ending of the first and continues the adventure of young Jedi Knight 
Cal Kestis as he and his friends continue in their struggle to survive the tyranny of the Galactic Empire. All right, and we always give a little bit of a spoiler warning here at the beginning of the show. We are not going to dive into uh, major story spoilers. We're not going to talk about any twists or turns that there may or may not be in the story of this game. However, we are going to talk about the skills and the abilities that you unlock, because in order for us to talk about combat and the mechanics of the game, we are going to have to get into some of those things. But for the most part, this is going to be free of any major spoilers. All right, so as we go back to the first game, Fallen Order, uh, which, by the way, sold over 10 million copies. I mean, enormous, enormous hit. I know I bought the game about a year, year and a half after its release. I know Josh had really loved it. I played it for a couple hours, but just never finished it. We had so many games to play for the pod. It just kind of got brushed to the side. I believe both of you were huge fans of Fallen Order. Can you guys just tell us a little bit about why you found the first game to be so special? Oh, man. I absolutely loved the first one. Um, I'm, uh, as far as me, I I love origin stories. I'm an origin story guy. Um, the the original or the Batman, you know, where where he becomes Batman, you know. <laughs> Every the, Batman uh, movie. You ever dance with the death by the pale moonlight. <laughs> and then in Superman with the beautiful Henry Cavill, who is a, a mega gamer, by the way. Yeah. Um, yep. But Fe- but yeah, future guest of the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we're waiting for you, buddy. Um I, I just love the origin story. So I love how seeing Cal's kind of uh beginnings where he started, how how he uh, was hiding from the empire where what he was doing to keep hidden and then how he progressed and you get to go back and see him as a you know young padawan and, and learning the ways of the force and and then all all the the i love the worlds the areas you could explore um and then you know you learn the new abilities the upgrades you get to go back and then get unlock different areas that you weren't able to access before um it, it was it was just one of those games that really hit a lot of my trigger points for what i I find desirable in a game. Um, and it just, it, 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 uh, was one that, again, I know I say this a lot, but I put a lot of hours in. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Josh? I, I, I mean, I've been the one that's been hyping up Jedi Fallen Order for a long time. I've recommended it to people. I, for me, that game caught me off guard because I had heard of it. I didn't play it at release. I went, man, here's a Star Wars game I should probably look into. And it just really, landed for me um i loved the graphics i love the combat it felt like i was actually fighting with a lightsaber i liked that it was kind of dark souls ish in that regard i liked the exploration aspect of hey man what's back behind this corner and then oh yeah there is a chest back there that's great so you were rewarded for exploring um i like the progression through the game you really felt like you were this untrained jedi that is like learning the force and getting stronger. And so like by the end of the game, you really feel like you're, you you just, man, I'm tough and I'm bad. Better not mess with me. You know, I, I I have talked about the ending to that game. I won't spoil it here just in case, but it's got one of the coolest video game moments in a video game ever. So Jedi fallen order just landed with me in so many different ways. And so when Jedi survivor was announced, I got really excited. And then the game release is finally here after some delays. And I was so amped to just dive into Jedi survivor. And don't forget, that's where we first met Marin. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Do you know, <laughs> oh, this you is, this sounds terrible, <laughs> but I forgot who Marin was. I actually oh, had no. to, well, it, now, it had been a long time since I played fallen order, but then there's Marin in the sequel in survivor and i went wait who is this lady and i had to google marin jedi fallen order and then the second they showed a picture of her i was like oh okay and then a lot of the story kind of came flooding back to me at that point yeah yeah Yeah. marin Marin is going to feature a lot in this episode (laughs) (laughs) yeah this game is definitely a direct sequel so you know that was one of the things that for me was kind of disorienting and and tough to catch up on because I only played the opening couple hours of Fallen Order. And in Jedi Survivor, they do give you a little video you can watch to catch you up on the story. And let me just tell you right now, if you have not played the first game, that video will not do you any good <laughs> because I still had no idea who anyone was. Throughout the entirety of this game, they're always making reference to things that happened in the past I think I think you're setting yourself up for a lot more success if you play Fallen Order first 
and then come play Jedi Survivor. Um, all right. So I know how much you guys love Fallen Order. I know for all of us, this is like near the top of the most anticipated titles of the year. I know we featured it when we did a preview of all of 2023 and what we were most looking forward to. But um, for anyone who's maybe never played either of these games, we've already thrown out you know some details about it. But Ryan, how would you describe the Star Wars Jedi games to someone who has not played them? I guess the way to describe it is it's a semi-open world. You can you, you start out, you get to kind of progress through the different levels. You get to go to you know, through the different worlds, and you get to go through, and it has you semi on a guided path. But you can explore. You can, and then you you're able to, as you progress, come back to the world. You get, you're able to get to different areas that you weren't able to get to before, and uh, and and find new chests, find new uh, cosmetics, new uh, abilities, new stem packs, things to help you with actual combat or just for you know cosmetics and, and the way you look. Um, I I loved it. I I thought that uh, that anyone who appreciates that type of game would would. Uh, would like this one it it does just enough to keep it fresh throughout these different worlds when you unlock these other things um but it but it still has what you love in the game that that continues through each one of the worlds yeah i would definitely say you could put it under the action adventure genre even though it does have souls type mechanics it's not a a punishing difficulty level with these games it it, it's souls like in the fact that there are areas that you complete and then you unlock a shortcut and anytime you save it respawns all the enemies around you so in a way it is a little bit souls light but it is set in that you know semi-open star wars world which is obviously a ton of fun um Josh, talking about the story of Star Wars Jedi, this timeline takes place in between the original OG trilogy and the prequels, right? Yep. Yep, that's exactly right. Order 66 has been executed by Emperor Palpatine. (laughs) They are hunting down the Jedi. Uh, Fallen Order starts with, you know, you're in hiding as Cal Kestis and you, you, you know, nobody knows you have the force. That game starts off right away with you having to use the force to save a friend. So it kind of kicks off the whole events of Fallen Order. Uh, But yeah, that's smack where we're at with Star Wars lore. The Empire is as strong as they've ever been. Um, all the Jedi have been eliminated are, or are in hiding. The Rebellion is just really a thought at this point. Um, you know, For all you Star Wars nerds, there are some of these pockets with Saul Gerrera and things like that. Um, you know, that is actually, he's actually mentioned in Jedi Survivor as well. But that is the timeline. It's a bleak uh, galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as far as not that a good goes. time for the Jedi. Yeah, it's not. It's not. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you kind of play from that aspect of like, you know, you do a lot of fighting of the Empire, but you're fighting stormtroopers and not the really strong people uh, in that. In Fallen Order, you do fight some of the, the second sister, or the sisters, which are like the female Sith. Um, and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. Jedi Survivor takes place five years after Fallen Order. So really, yeah. the Empire is even stronger now. And, you know, there's no such thing as the rebellion at that point, really. Yeah, the Empire's stronger. Cal is stronger. Right. And he's kind of got his little, you know, rag team running together, doing what they can do to fight against the Empire. And, and the, the story just kind of goes from there. We don't want to divulge, you know, too many details there. That's pretty much all you need to know. Now, let's go into some of the combat here. And I think one of the things that is really neat about both Fallen Order and Survivor, and and Survivor does it even more, is the fact that you do go into different stances, which will directly impact what kind of combat you have in the game. Every stance that you can choose between have different meters, and it changes the amount of power, speed, range, or defense that you have. Now, back in Fallen Order, you only had a total of three stances that you could choose between. You could do a single lightsaber. You could do a double-bladed saber, kind of think like Darth Maul's two-sided lightsaber. Or you could do dual sabers. All three of those stances do return for Survivor, but they do also add two new stances. So there's now five. They added a cross-guard stance. Think Kylo Ren's cross-shaped saber. And they also added a blaster stance, 
where you can shoot a blaster, which consumes ammo, and then you recharge your ammo by landing hits with your lightsaber as melee. Uh, don't think too hard about the science behind that last one. <laughs> I was a little curious to know what you guys thought about this stance system, because I actually think it's really neat and adds a really interesting wrinkle to the combat. And that's kind of like overall, it's going to drive what your combat is going to be like. Yeah, I, I you know, I like Souls combat um, for me, giving me. You know, the more control over the character, my attacks, the fact that you need to either dodge or parry and you can't just button mash nonstop. I like that. I think it adds a layer of like strategy, timing, that kind of stuff that I really enjoy. So for them to add these stances to the game and lightsabers, right? Like that was kind of the neat thing is like, hey, you get a blaster in Jedi Survivor or you get a cross guard with a la, uh, Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren. Thank you. I was going to call him Darth something. I was like, wait a minute. That's not his name. Um, <laughs> Darth Kylo. Yeah, Darth Kylo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Sorry, fellow Star Wars nerds. Um, but You're going to hear you know, about so, that one. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, so I thought that was really neat. I'm like, oh, we're going to get a, a wider variety of lightsabers that we can use. How's the blaster going to work in this game? I really did like the flavor that it added to the game in that regard. I found that I would go down one branch because there are skill trees uh, associated with the lightsabers. I would go down one branch and then I would be like, I want to try this one. And then I would just switch and and force myself to use another stance for a while. Um, and I tried that for all of them with the exception of the blaster, which I found to be personally very disappointing. It's so uncivilized. <laughs> what was your beef with the blaster build? Uh, it just didn't feel satisfying to me, man. Like I don't, I'm a Jedi. I don't want to pew pew things. <laughs> you know, like you want to be Luke, not Han Solo, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. What about you, Ryan? Do you feel like the stances make some interesting combat in these? Yeah. No, I I, th- I thought it was great. Um, I'm probably the same way with the blaster. It's uh, like I said, so uncivilized. So uncivilized. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just didn't. I, I would have it on there sometimes just, uh, you know, for boss fights, you can go and, and, you know, pop them, get get their shield down a little bit or whatever. But um, I, I was a I was a Darth Maul double saber guy um, for sure. Most most of the most of the game. But I did. The cool thing was you're able to uh, uh, reset the talent tree and it, it cost it was free the first time. Then then it, I think it cost you a skill point or whatever after yep. that. But but you were able to reset it. Go through, change, change what you wanted, and try all those variations and see what fit your play style. I'm not. I, I appreciate the you know the the soul style. You know, just roll, 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 and parry and do that stuff. But I'm more of a. I'm an impatient gamer, so <laughs> I, I tend to just. I want to. I want to get through this guy, and I just want to kick his butt. So so uh, I, I tended to just go with the, the double one, but it is cool to have those options and those variants that you could gear towards what you like to do within the game, which I, I thought was pretty neat. Yeah, I also really love the fact that they added dismemberment in this game. That because was, that was such lacking. a good addition, man. Such yes, I want to say, there's a spot, there was this one point where I made sure to make a note on Jetta. You go and you slice both arms and you throw the saber and then bring it back to you, and it cuts off the legs of the droid. And I just thought it was, <laughs> yeah. it was. I just, I love when games make you just go, oh, you know, like that. And, <laughs> and that's what I did it a bunch of times through this game because there's so many cool points. But, but that was one the dismemberment, you know, on droids or on you know stormtroopers that that really hit with me. It's kind of goofy that they didn't have it in the first game because I did read that they wanted it to be a little more family friendly. They wanted the game rate to be rated teen. So they just cut out all dismemberment. Meanwhile, in the Star Wars movies, people do lose their limbs yeah. from lightsabers. You know, Luke <laughs> oh, gets yeah. his hand chopped off and probably the most famous scene in the OG trilogy. You know, so it is funny that they finally added it here in Survivor. But it does add a little bit of that visceral content, which is how a lightsaber would respond in real life. And I felt like that added definitely an extra dimension. It definitely made the combat more fun to watch. I don't know about you guys, but I think that this game really nailed the lightsaber combat. I think the melee side of things in this game is just about perfect. The the blocking meters that you have to work through, if you time a block perfectly, it's a parry and you get that opening to attack the enemy. 
I totally agree with what you said, Ryan, where I'm a little too impatient for souls where you're rolling all the time. This, I think, finds that right spot in the pendulum where Mm -hmm. you can't be reckless, but you can still be aggressive and have a lot of fun at the same time, as long as you don't go with the cross guard saber, which is wildly slow. Yeah, and that's kind of the thing, right? (laughs) Is it's like I like the fact that if you want speed, go with either the dual wielding or the like the the double saber like Darth Maul has. And yeah. then you can just wade into things, which is great. But on the flip side, you can go single saber, which is very, very balanced, or the cross guard, which is super slow, but hits kind of like a truck at the mm-hmm. same time. It has a lot of defense to it. And so it's like you can really adjust the combat style that you want to play in this game, which I think is a really good choice by them. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back with more multiplayer gaming podcast. Okay, we are back. So continuing our conversation here about the combat in Jedi Survivor, obviously, since you are a Jedi, the Force is going to play a central role in how you fight enemies. You can do things like push enemies off ledges. You can confuse the mind of an enemy or a beast, make them fight on your side. You can even slow down time with an area of effect around you and kind of go ham for a few seconds. There's also attacks that you can do that are not just swinging your lightsaber, but it's like a special attack, and that'll also drain some force out of your meter. Um, I don't know about you guys. I, I felt like the lightsaber abilities were a lot of fun. I felt like the force only abilities were maybe just lacking slightly. Although I will say anytime I saw an enemy near a ledge, I got very excited because <laughs> the very first thing I'm going to do is pull that trigger and send that uh, stormtrooper blasting off a ledge. Yeah, I, I'm I'm with you, Paul. It, this is funny to me too because, like, you know, you are a trained, powerful Jedi in this game, and I found that I was just wading in with my lightsaber. 95% of the time and rarely using the force in combat. Now you do have force moves, so you can do a big, you know, overhead smash or a lunge or something like that that does consume some of your force meter as like a special move. It's not like an ultimate or anything. It's just a, you know, they call it like a force move and it's like, okay, well, it drains a small bit. But then you have your actual force abilities like the time slow or the, the Jedi mind tricks or the push or the pull or any of that stuff. And it's odd to me because I found I didn't really use those in combat very much. I almost never use yeah. them. I want I want a yeah. little they do give you the opportunity to pick up certain items and throw them at people, but I want to see that a little bit more. I want it to be like and I know it's a, it's probably the worst Star Wars movie, but Attack of the Clones. When you get to the end when you have Yoda fighting Dooku, they're like grabbing rocks and hurling yeah. them at each other and pulling things down off the ceiling. You don't really get to do any of that here. I'm like you, Josh. I uh, 98% of my combat was solely using my lightsaber. I was very rarely using push or pull or even mind control. If there was like a big fight, they clearly want you to use it. There's like one beast and in eight stormtroopers. Of course, I'm going to, you know, confuse the beast and start picking yeah. them off one by one. But I do wish that there was maybe just a little bit more force use. I wonder if they were afraid of giving you too much too soon. Maybe we'll see that in the next entry. That's maybe. That's one thing I'm hoping for. What about you, Ryan? Were you using the Force a lot? Like, maybe I just don't know why I didn't use it very much. I I didn't. I I used the the double bladed saber. So there was one move where y- you kind of do this whirlwind. Tur- you know, you jump forward and, and spin. And I I used that quite a bit just because it was so easy to use and and it worked well with just button mashing <laughs> the <Yeah>. saber. But <laughs> other than that, no, I I really didn't use much uh, unless, of course, I saw a bunch of stormtroopers by a cliff. Yeah, that <laughs> Which, is satisfying as I anything, would, man. I would go out of my way to draw as many as I could to the edge of the yeah. cliff, jump, and then and then get behind them, and then push as many as I could at once off and see how many I could get get to just fly off. That and then uh, quite a bit, I would love to, if I came into an interaction with a bunch of guys, I love to do the force pull and just saber right to the chest. Yeah. That, that, uh, yeah. Those two were like, <laughs> that, that was basically the extent of my force use in, in the game. <laughs> but yeah. I, had a, I had a lot of fun doing it. But yeah, other than that, it was it was the same as you guys, just, just uh, coming in with the saber and just going to town. I mean, lightsabers are just so cool. It's really hard to make anything compete with a lightsaber because if I can 
reflect blaster shots back at stormtroopers and kill them and then do the mega charge. I always use the single lightsaber. When, when, when I look at the four meters and they're all right in the middle, I'm like, all right, that's going to work for the whole game. I'm a creature of habit. When I already was used to the moves for single blade, I did dabble in the others just for the fun of it, but I always found myself coming back to single lightsaber. Paul, good on you for being a traditionalist because I <laughs> went single saber for a good 85% of the game. Yeah. It was just oh, wow. so more good. Accurate. It was so good. Well, I mean, not only that, but because it was so balanced, it I just found like it was great in so many aspects. Like the dual sabers super fast and quick, but they hit like spaghetti noodles. Now, <laughs> here's one thing, and I'm not trying to slam this too much, but I do have to kind of point out that it's like, how is a cross guard bigger lightsaber more deadly than two little lightsabers? Because the cross guard hits really, really hard, and the little lightsabers hit like spaghetti noodles. But it's a freaking lightsaber, man. Like, how is yeah, that? Like, it I should don't, cut through maybe anything. I don't understand how like lightsaber <laughs> technology questions. works. But, like, <laughs> I did note, I did chuckle at one point going like, how, is it, what's the, what's the thinking behind this? <laughs> the thinking is it's a game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. you need different yeah. stances. That's, that's Not really all the world. Down. Yeah. It's real to me. Oh, real quick. Did, was I the only one that could not? Maybe it's just because I couldn't pick red. But did you guys go through all your different colors on your lightsabers yes. like eight times? I did. I'm like, yeah, ah, I don't like this one. I go switch it. Eh, I don't like this one. I go. <laughs> Every- uh, guess who doesn't care one iota oh, about cosmetics see, and I never change Cal's beard, never change the outfit, never change the saber. You didn't get a mullet? <sighs> Are you kidding no. me? <laughs> I, I don't care about cosmetics, but I do care about the color of my lightsaber. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I left mine with the default the entire oh, game. Man. All right. So let's move on and talk about exploration in the open world because I think this is something that I find in some ways kind of infuriating. And in other ways, I think it's the best stuff that Star Wars Jedi has to offer. There is so much you can do in the open world here. This game throws things at you like rumors, bounties, Jedi meditation chambers. There are collectibles galore. I mean, you're double jumping, wall running, using zip lines. You're using the force to pull, uh, you know, pillars of rock out of the ground and then jumping off of those. I mean, you could squeeze Easily a hundred hours out of this game if you want to go collect everything and explore every corner of the world. But at the same time, there are things that I found rather frustrating here. I don't know if we want to start with the good or the bad, but like, what, what do you guys want to cover first? Start with, with the bad, the, end with the good. Start with the bad. All right. All right. Here's my number one gripe. This game has so many chests that you can go find and open, but what do they all have? Squat. Cosmetics. Cosmetics. Care about the most. Cosmetics. <laughs> yeah, I know. I got so excited in the beginning because I'd be like, oh, there's a chest way up there in the air. Well, how do I get to it? Okay, maybe I can wall right off that and maybe I can get here and oh, maybe I'm supposed to start on that ledge. And then you open it and it's like, congratulations, you've unlocked Wanderer Pants for Cal. Yeah. <laughs> and it does not change your stats or you know you unlock some part of your lightsaber or you're going to unlock Cal's mullet you know or full all beard that, or short works. beard or what you know it's not worth a soul patch <laughs> no i was so disappointed i stopped opening chests I, I, I would get i would i would find my way up to get to them out of curiosity and i i wouldn't even open them i just would run past them so you can tell the difference because there are points that will give you a skill perk or it'll give you an extra stim pack and of course i would get those but there's nothing more ho-hum than finding all these treasure chests that don't have any actual treasure Dude, I'm with you. It was fun for the first 15 chests. Like, honestly, I was like, oh, cool. I got, I, finally, I can give Cal a beard and he can quit looking like a small child, <laughs> you know, or something like that. But, but then after, after a while, I'm with you, Paul. I was just like, dude, I, it's, it's more the challenge of how do I get up there to get that chest? But what was in the chest? I could care less about towards the end of the game, man. Like, Couldn't honestly, care less. because yeah. it's not like the first game where you unlock different lightsaber colors or something cool. This was literally like, here's a new pair of pants and it looks 80%. Like, I'd have to compare them. Like, how? Oh, this one has a cargo pocket. Okay. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and it's, dude, it was such a wasted opportunity. And I yeah. get that they're not wanting to go down that route. But just fake it at that point. Just tell me, like, this gives me plus one dexterity, you know, or, or you know, plus 12 power or something, man. Like, something. Even if it was worthless and you're literally lying to me at that point, 
refresh my stim packs yes. in the middle before I find the Just, next meditation ooh, points. That's, that's anything, a good one. Yep. anything like that would have been nice. I agree you, 100%. You know, though, Josh, if they did that and you had different ed plus dexterity or plus this and that, then you would complain. This doesn't really matter. I this isn't mean, the right thing. I, maybe, but it's better than be the better. cosmetics, honestly. <laughs> like, yeah. And I know that there's somebody out there that would have hacked the game and been like, this dexterity doesn't change anything. But it would have yeah. been more rewarding to me than another jacket or another set of colors that I can use to die BD one, you know, or, or my lightsaber or something like that. Like, and again, I know that Paul and I, you know, in particular don't care about cosmetics a whole lot, but having cosmetics be the only reward in a game like this was a little disappointing. Yeah. Yeah, You beat a big boss. You're not getting anything cool. You know, most of the time Uh, I will also say I had this issue with fallen order as well. I absolutely hate the holographic map in these oh, games. Everybody hates that. <laughs> I think they are atrocious. And I swear to you, this game trolls you on purpose sometimes <laughs> because the way the stupid map works is they put like a little yellow marker for a possible path to go find an objective. The problem is that if you have a whole bunch of quests, you're going to have yellow paths all over the place. And I remember one time in particular, I was like, okay, that yellow corridor is closest to my objective, so I'm going to start there first. And I started running that way, and then Cal out loud said, oh, I better come this way later, because there was a big like beast in a, in a bird nest. And so I was like, okay, I guess that's the wrong way. And I spent about 40 minutes exploring all the other yellow corridors, all of which were wrong. It turns out you can go the way of that first path, and that was the right way to go, but I felt like the game like threw me off the scent for no reason. So I found that to be very annoying. I kind of wish you could just say this quest is primary and just give me a navigation marker on the ground. I, I I know that that kind of takes away some of the exploration and working to get there, but sometimes the path to get there is not obvious because you might have to climb up a completely different part of the map and now you're going to grab a bird and the bird is going to help you glide all the way across to the other part of the map and it's very confusing to know where to go at times and i i found that to be very frustrating yeah no i agree yeah i'm the i'm the i'm the same way i li- i like a little arrow marker and uh, there were so many times when i was looking through that map and then you you, you zoom in zoom out and then you're like what level am i on and it, yeah, and it the, brings yes. you up what and floor? down and you're like oh my gosh yeah what floor <laughs> and i remember that on the last on fallen order as well you know you're you're looking and okay Okay, so I got to go this way, and okay, there's a door. Well, I can't get through that door, and yeah, no, it it, it was uh, yeah, that map sucks. That's the best word. You for need it. a cartography <laughs> degree yeah. and very good three dimensional thinking. I mean, but I will say everything else. Everything else is great about the open world. So like, you wanted me to pull out the bad stuff first. I love games that have like a lot of rock climbing and parkour type stuff. Parkour, 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 parkour. parkour! I'm right Woo! behind you, Andy. Come on. And this game gives that to you in spades, and it's very fast. When you're climbing around ledges or swinging from like a grate hanging over the ground like monkey bars, Cal moves so fast. I absolutely love it. Moving around in the world is incredibly easy, and when you throw in double jumps and wall running, it's even more fun. I absolutely love running around in this world. They do give you mounts. I'm not sure the mounts make you run all that much faster than when you're on foot. So the mounts I could kind of take or leave, but I absolutely loved working my way to objective points. And I thought that's a huge bonus in this game. See, I'm going to disagree with you, Paul, because one of my negatives in this was the amount of grates and vines and crap that you had to climb, dude. Oh my goodness. And listen, you know, we didn't say it, but this game definitely has Metroidvania type elements. You get abilities, you can now go back to a place you've been before and double jump over this gap or, you know, you know, use the force to open up a door that you couldn't open before and things like that. So that that's just part of the DNA of this game. And it was like that with Fallen Order as well. And, and, you know, you did a good bit of climbing on mountain ledges and stuff like that. Where I am going to complain about Jedi Survivor is they leaned into the climbing of fences and grates 
<laughs> oh my goodness, dude. There, there was literally a point. I, I'm probably 15 hours into this game and I just out loud was like, why? Like another great, like number one, who's putting all of these fences yes. on the side of a mountain, man? <laughs> like, yeah. Why are they there? I, it just, it, it became like, it's a mechanic that it was cool at first, but they used it so freaking much in this game that it really started to bug me after a while to where I was like, dude, if I have to climb one more stinking fence and it's not just a little, it's a climb up, shimmy over for 30 seconds, climb up again, shimmy back the other direction for 30 seconds. And then you finally get Wall to the top of this ledge over and over. Watch the elect- or watch <laughs> yeah. out for the electric. Bolt, now I will you know? say that where this game shined for me is I do agree with you with the parkour and the actual traversal, because here's the, here's the difference, right? There are so many times where I'm spending freaking 45 seconds doing nothing but climbing a fence. And that is the most boring thing in the world to me. But then there were part of the games <laughs> where you were wall running and then double jumping to another wall and then running on that one and then double jumping to another wall and then having to time a grab of a vine that was hanging down to then swing to another vine to, or to pull, then, right, pull a cable right. with the force and, while and you're dude, midair. Where this game shined so well was when it was those chaotic moments where I'm literally yeah. on the edge of my seat going, don't miss this jump. Don't miss this pull of this vine or you're going to fall and you're going to die. And it was this like amazing, fast paced parkour, like stringing all of your Jedi skills together. And that was great. But then it was just like, oh, and now climb this fence for 40 seconds after all that. And I was just like, oh, guys, like, come on. man. <laughs> yeah, those, those areas where you were able to chain all of that together. And, and like you said, chaotic, you just keep going, going, going through. Double jump, jumbled up. And I want to say, the force dash is so yes. freaking sweet. <laughs> yeah. I wish I could just force dash everywhere in my life forever. Yeah. That I, I would just jump and force dash when I'm instead of running, that's all yeah. I would do. I would just force dash because I was like, this is so cool, man. You know, I, I do the the vines and the and the the wall grates and all that stuff everywhere kind of definitely got just boring you're just like oh here we go i gotta climb up at this again but but when they would have those little tweaks to make it just a little bit different where you had to jump off this climb off this climb for just a second but then you had to get get to something else you know and so it progressed and it wasn't just a long you know great you had to climb across um it it made a difference you might be hanging off the ground more than you're standing on yeah, the ground. Honestly, in this game. It, it feels like that, that way at times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's just very briefly, because I know we're going to quickly run out of time here, but I do really want to say a lot of positive things about the voice acting. Yes. I think the voice act work in this game is phenomenal. I have always been a huge fan of Cameron Monaghan, who plays Cal. I think he's fantastic. I think all the motion capture stuff is awesome. I think Bode also is incredible. Yes. Uh, his name is Noshir Dalal. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. You might know his voice as Charles from Red Dead Redemption 2. I thought he was a great addition in this game, and I love the voice work. Uh, Marin... Is yes. not as fun to what? listen don't to, you, but don't I, don't you I say know anything bad. About I Mary know Paul. it's the character, but she is like intentionally Amazing. underacting the entire time. But I get it. She she reminds me of uh, Aubrey Plaza a little bit. I can yeah, see that a little bit, just awkward and and, and weird and smoking hot. <laughs> 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 I will say the the voice acting all of the characters that that was all really top notch. I mean, you really felt like you were in this this world, this galaxy, these characters, you're invested in them. Um you know, even some of the little side characters, you know, I don't want to, we're not going to spoil anything, but some of the other people that you come across that maybe don't play major roles, I thought were all really well done. Um, I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Um, I thought they really did a good job with that. All right. So we're going to get to my favorite topic about this game. Marin? We have to talk oh. <laughs> about some of the technical aspects oh, boy. of this game. All right. Wait, Paul, didn't I say Ooh. start with the bad, end with the good? Oh, well, oh. this is a bad sandwich. <laughs> we're starting <laughs> oh, bad and we're going to end bad. 
All right, we got to talk about graphics and performance oh. because these were some of the biggest swing and a miss that I've seen in a very long time in a game. I know we all experienced slightly different things because Ryan played on PS5, which I love when one of us play on console because it can be so different. Josh played on PC with his brand new absolute beast. Uh, yeah. What what graphics card do you have? A 3080? I have a 3080, which is probably the worst component of my PC right now. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. My, my computer's only a couple years old, but it was very top of the line about 20 months ago, and I have a 2080 Ti. This game looked and performed so bad on my computer. I was getting crashes left and right. Kobo, in particular was crashing for me every minute. I was furiously uh, looking at the boards on Steam and on Reddit, and someone said, dude, I swear to you, it's the birds. Every time I climb up a ledge and see birds fly in the air, my computer freezes. And guess what? As soon as I read that comment, every time I saw those birds, man, my computer crashed. I had to control alt delete and task the game and restart it, and it had to compile those stupid game files for another 60 seconds. Oh. I had to change the priority of my processor to real time, and that kind of helped, but I have never had a game freeze this much for me on PC. The Callisto Protocol was constantly stuttering so bad you could not play it. This game looked awful. Even even when I would run it on Epic settings, it looked horrific, and when I put it on low settings, the game looked exactly the same. I swear to you, it did not change anything, and that's even when I would fully restart the game. I was often seeing my frame rate drop down into the high 20s, low 30s, and it got to a point where I stopped playing. This is one of the very few games that I did not beat. I try to beat every game that we play. You guys see that all the time, unless the game's too big. This one, I just stopped. I was so tired of having to restart this game that I got about two thirds of the way through it and then threw in the towel. I couldn't handle it anymore. I don't, I don't blame you. This uh, notoriously, the PC port on this game has massive performance issues. And I'll be honest, I don't, they're not fixed. They've, I think they've released three patches so far. Um, to try to fix the performance issues, and they've only gained a little bit of ground on this. This is this was the unfortunately the most well known issue um, with this game, especially with the reviews that came out, people playing it, that kind of thing. I, I have to apologize to Paul because Paul kept saying this game looks like garbage, and I went, my game looks fine. And yeah. Paul just we kept going sharing like, screenshots. Paul just kept going like, <laughs> Josh, I know you're old and you're half blind by now, but how can you say this game looks good? And I'm how just hard going are you squinting like, over there? I was like going like, Paul, like, what are you talking? So we legitimately started sharing screenshots with each other. And Paul's game looked like garbage. And then, <laughs> it bad. like any good friend would do, he went, Josh, look at the character models, though, because I'm just distracted by this gorgeous scenery. I'm playing in 4K epic settings. You know, I'm getting about 45 frames per second with a beast of a PC. And I mean, I, I am playing at 4K, so it's like, okay, well, I get that, but there's no reason for the performance on this game. But then Paul points out and he goes, yep. look at the character model. And then I look went... Look at Cal's hair. Yeah. And then I looked at <laughs> yeah, it and then I the could hair. not unsee that it was like half the polygon, like texture resolution. So and fuzzy. Then, yeah. And then I was like, oh, yeah, you're kind of Paul. right, Paul. <laughs> Dang it. And then the whole rest of the game, I'm just looking and I'm like, Cal's hands look terrible. <laughs> I couldn't you're unsee his fingers, me. man. And then I That's was because you can like, customize his hair. It's not going to look yeah, as good. It's, it's true. It's, oh, drove it's me like crazy. A, I don't know what the term for, you know, a mask, I think is what they call it, where it's like they have to have the placeholder there. But, you know, that, that said, there are a ton of issues with the technical performance of this game on PC, and they haven't fixed it yet. Now, I'm lucky in that I was able to play through the game. I definitely wasn't getting the performance that I should have been getting. I did crash a couple times. There definitely is some stuttering. The game does every single time you load the game, like or you start the game, I should say. It does compile shaders for a good 60 seconds every time, not once yep. like a lot of games do. Just like Warzone. Yeah, so there was there's definitely that. How, uh, Ryan for PS5, how did it run? You did share a screenshot of a crash with us 
uh, at one I point. Did. But yeah, I well, I mean, to get mine going, I had to do the painstaking process of turning on my PlayStation. So uh, oh, it was it was so Brutal. horrible. No. <laughs> no, but it definitely. Um, I I for sure know what you guys are talking about about the the you know the looks and the co- you know good thing they got all those cosmetics, right, Paul? Yeah, yeah. Thank goodness. <laughs> it was um I I I I had the one crash and then I found out that sometimes it doesn't like if you jump on the turbo lift when it's going down in force dash. <laughs> That's and right. So I remember then, you saying that. And so <laughs> and so then I was like I tried it again and it did it again. I'm like, "Oh, okay, yeah. Don't do that anymore." Um other than that, it ran pretty dang well for me. Um I didn't Go have Sony. too many I did yeah, I didn't have too many issues. I did near the end fight a certain somebody who was supposed to have a lightsaber and there was no lightsaber but i could i could hear all the noise you know all the crashing of the lightsabers he's larping he's just he's just like zoom 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 and there's nothing there and i'm like okay well here we go funny i i ended up dying uh but and then when it when it came back then he had one the next the next go around but uh yeah it, it was it was not uh the same experience that you guys had Dude, I just remember telling you guys, because you were both a little ahead of me in this game, and I said, guys, good news, I'm taking off of Kobo. I don't think I'm going to have any more issues, because there's no birds. And Josh just put... I don't, I, I don't have the heart to tell you. And I said, are you telling me I'm going to come back to Kobo? And it's literally like... 14 minutes later you do the next yeah. mission they're like go back to kobo and go go figure this out and you keep coming back to kobo and that's where i had the most issues oh, <laughs> all right well we're gonna go ahead and take our last break and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna close out the show with our regular segments all right guys one last quick question before we move on to our regular segments overall did this game work for you did you like the story, the combat? Is it worth the seventy dollar price tag? What would you guys say? Um, for me, uh, I mean, as 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 a Star Wars fan and how much I loved the first one, um, the way I always look at it is is how many hours of gameplay am I getting out of this? You can you know, you go to a movie now, it's twenty bucks, and that's yeah. an hour and a half, two hours, you know, of the day plus fifty dollars for popcorn, so. <laughs> for 70 bucks to get the amount of hours you'll get at this especially if you go back and you do do all those chests and you do explore these lands and these areas and and go back and get into it a little more depth hopefully once they kind of patch things up and, and fix it a little bit um i i, I feel that for this release I, I think it's worth it you know for me what about you josh i was super hyped for this game um i you know i this is one that I was really, really looking forward to. I will say that I do think it's worth it. I'll give some of my thoughts on things that I didn't like about the game here in just a little bit, because um, I definitely have some things I want to talk about there. But I will say that overall, I this I had 36 hours in this game. I did some of the side missions. I definitely went and collected the chests and things like that when I saw them. And I mean, that's two bucks an hour, you know, at, at yeah. that point. So f- the value is definitely there. This This is a very enjoyable game, um, especially like you said, Ryan, if you love Star Wars, you were in the Star Wars universe at that oh, this yeah. point, you know, so there's that added benefit as well. So I will say that, yes, I do think it's worth the 70 bucks. It was worth the 70 bucks just for one point where I got to throw a stormtrooper up into a TIE fighter. Yes. <laughs> and I just, yeah. it was another one of those moments I where I was like, oh, yeah. oh you know, <laughs> it, that, that's, that's what gets, that's what gets me going for sure. Yeah, my biggest issue is simply the technical issues on PC. I think if you can pick this one up for PS5, then it's probably worth it. Because this game has a lot of great stuff to offer. But this is the first game I've played in a very long time, other than Callisto Protocol, where I just said, I, I simply can't play this game and I have a good gaming PC. Like the problem is not the hardware. The problem is the game. Yeah. And I don't know what's going on, but the $70 games are the ones that are performing yeah. the worst. Yeah. It's Forspoken. It's Gotham Knights. It's this. And ironically, it's like the cheaper games that are running perfect, like Dead Island 2. So I don't know what's up with the $70 price tag, but these it's games seem to right really now. struggle on PC. It's a curse right now. Yeah. It might be. (laughs) All right. Well, guys, let's go into our favorite segment. Time for some hot takes. Ready or not, that's hot. Yes. 
All right, guys, who wants oh, to go first? Boy. I'll you get go. my, I'll get, I'll get, <laughs> this is going to preview a little bit, but this is not, don't hear what I'm not seeing either, because a lot of this is based on my hype level uh, okay. going into this game. But this is one of the more disappointing games that has, that I've been hyped about that didn't live up to my expectations. And again, maybe my expectations were just too high, but and this is a hot take for me because of how much I was looking forward to this game and how much I love Fallen Order. But for me, this is one of the more disappointing releases that I've played this year. Dude. I don't even think it's that hot of a take. And I, I and that's saying something. Uh oh. <laughs> well, no, I'm so don't. annoyed right now because that's what I was going to say. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have let you go first. I no, have it on I here. I almost, let, I almost let you go first, Ryan. But then I was like, I mean, this would be his first hot take, so I don't want to put him on the spot. <laughs> I, I have it in my notes in all caps. First one was better. Yeah. Well, uh, yes. 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 I was. I was just. I. I don't know. I just. I. I didn't. I enjoyed myself. I had fun with this one, but I just didn't get sucked in the same way I did with that first one. This. This one. I just. At the end, I was like, you know, the the ending, for anyone who hasn't played it yet, and also no spoilers, it's great. I, I loved how the game ended, but I just didn't get that that just I didn't dive into the yeah. game like I did on the first one. So I yeah, su- it was it was super disappointing for me. I'm with you hundred percent, Ryan. I, su- I suggested Fallen Order to as many people as I could. Jedi Survivor, yeah. I'm not gonna be going around saying you have to play this game. Yeah. Well, right, this Paul. might not surprise you guys, but I also put down almost exactly what you guys said. I just pasted into our Discord. The first thing I wrote down was, this is the biggest disappointment of the year, and I don't think anything else will even come close Ooh. to it. Um, just to take things in a slightly different direction, I'm going to go ahead and say this is the worst loot system I've ever seen in a game. I have never been so disappointed in finding and opening chests. Sometimes you would get to an area, and all it is is a force echo, and I'm like, great. So now I get to sit around for 40 seconds and watch another part uh, of this story that I don't really care about. Uh, I think the loot system is absolutely horrendous in this game, and I I really hope it changes for the third, but I can't really imagine that it will. I agree with that. That's actually a good hot take, Paul, because you're right. How do you have these chests that look like, oh, man, and then you 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 had to work (laughs) to get there. So you're like, yes, and then it's crap and then you're like oh yeah no as long as 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 much time as i spend in these games that should take 30 40 hours i spend 80 because i love to just explore that's why i love you know tomb raiders and all those uh, uncharted i love that exploration and i just had no desire in this game same like as paul said i just see the chest i'm like yeah whatever you know i'll just go off to another area i'm like (laughs) i don't even want to go look in no game will you ever think that like when you play Tears of the Kingdom, you're not like, oh, who cares about that chest? Like, you're gonna go open it. You know, I don't know. God it, it of War Ragnarok, ten arrows, but <laughs> <laughs> God of War Ragnarok, you're not leaving yes. any chest behind. You're gonna check every single one. Yeah, yeah, it's it's crazy. And speaking of God of War, I did just want to comment on something from earlier. The as far as the climbing system goes, I think God of War is one that did that so well. Uh, yeah. As opposed to this Jedi, like you didn't get tired of climbing. At least I That's didn't in, in God of War. But like this, you know, it was just so oh, it's monotonous. Just climbing these stupid grates. But at least it's fast. If you go yeah. back and play like the old Uncharted's, Nathan Drake is kind of climbing like how a real <laughs> dude would climb. Where Cal Kestis is, you know, uh, he can mantle over this stuff like it's no one's business. Yeah. I still don't understand why you can't just stand on a rock and move the rock with the force and fly wherever you need to go. But <laughs> I'm not I, I won't I won't get into the weeds with questions like that. <laughs> All right. So we've shared some of our thoughts. Josh, you've got some community reviews to read. I do. Just so people get a broad uh, view of this game and how other people thought about it. We always pull good reviews and bad reviews to just, like I said, give more perspective on this. Um, when it's on Steam, we always go to Steam. So this first one is not recommended. 23 and a half hours on record. And it says, I am one with the crash and the crash is with me. I am one with the crash and the crash is with me. I am one with the crash and the crash is with me. I absolutely am loving it, but the latest oh, update has made it even more unplayable. So <laughs> When updates go in the wrong direction, now yeah, you're really that's struggling. Right. That's bad. Uh, the, sure, that one was such a good... Just a good Star Wars reference to so Solid, for sure. Squadron there. So 
Um, okay, this next one is recommended 22 and a half hours on record. And it says, I'm going to recommend it with the asterisks of if it runs on your computer <laughs> and probably <laughs> only on sale. It took me about 15 to 20 hours to do the story with a bit of side questing ex- exploration for funsies. If you like Fallen Order and Star Wars and 15 to 20 hours of fun and new content hits your acceptable price to fun ratio, then buy the game at that price point. This is one of the easiest wait and buy it on sale games that we've played in a while, in my opinion. All right. And then this uh, this next one is recommended 22.8 hours on record. And it says most of the negative reviews are based on the performance after launch. At the point of writing this, it still isn't perfect. Besides that, the game is actually fun. The combat is challenging, but it's diverse. The story is moving and interesting. It's not perfect. And some character subplots are shallow. Overall, it's a solid eight and a half out of 10 if the performance is fixed. I completely agree with every single word of that review. If this game ran flawlessly, I wouldn't think it's one of the best games of all time, but I would say it's a very, very good game. Yep. I don't know if I would say great, but very, very good, well worth playing, but the technical aspects just drag it, it down sours. so hard. This game cannot stop tripping over itself. It's like it's like having a Ferrari or Lamborghini that doesn't run. Just keeps breaking yeah, down. You know, right? It just sits yeah. in the like, garage. What's yeah. the point, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then this last one is not recommended. And it it says, all in all, yes, I had fun playing this game. The combat was fun for the most part and exploration was all right, more or less. But the useless mounts, the underwhelming story, the dumbing down of the characters and other additions that while cool or neat turned out to be rather pointless, mixed with the awful excuse of a new game plus adding zero replayability for me, I just can't tell people this game is worth $70. For $50, I'd say yes, but the content this game brings with the time you need to complete it for $70, nah. Okay, so am I not crazy about the mounts? I'm glad someone else mentioned this. That's actually why I pulled this review. Dude. is it I'll, like plus five percent run speed? Like I, I, I honestly don't know how much of a yeah, boost it is. I, don't I, know what the point I is. literally used the mounts when you had to, and yes. that was to the jump only higher. time That's I did. The yeah, only to jump, time I used it as well. Jump That's up all to get is. to that other ledge, and then that was it. I never touched them again. <laughs> so I'm oh, gonna funny. say this about the reviews. I have never had a harder time pulling reviews for a game that we have covered than I did for this one because every single review was about performance aspects. Whether it was good or bad, people <laughs> people that were leaving negative reviews were saying that I can't play. This game's terrible. Like what's going on with PC gaming right now? And then the people leaving good reviews weren't extolling the virtues of the game. They were just yeah. saying game runs fine on my computer. <laughs> like <laughs> nice. I was just like somebody say something about the game. And so after literally (laughs) probably an hour of scrubbing reviews, I managed to find these four where at least somebody mentioned gameplay. Oh, that's too funny. (laughs) All right. So, uh, all right. This is the part where we guess the overall steam score. So you've gotten some good reviews. You've gotten some bad reviews. You kind of know our thoughts a little bit. This is where we try to guess the steam score on the scale of 0 to 100 of where we think this game is rated on Steam overall. Isn't and Ryan? you won last time. I, I thought you did. No, I did because no, I had a you terrible, won I had a terrible, terrible. I wasn't ready to win that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but you know, I say, I say, Ryan, Ryan's let's, let's celebrate Ryan. You get to get first crack. Oh, at this. geez. Okay. Um, well, so I, I feel like you said, with all the reviews, the the technical aspects and the issues that a lot of people ran into is definitely going to uh, drag it down in the mud a little bit. Um, I'm going to guess just, I, I would say it's probably should be if it ran fine, like a high 80s. But mm-hmm. I, I'm probably thinking it's going to get brought down to maybe uh, the uh, mid to high 70s. So I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go at a, a nice even 75. I think you're definitely right that it would be high 80s if it ran well. I think, man, this is tough because if people had the same experience as me, this game would be at a 2%. And I know not everyone had it that bad, but I'm going to go a lot lower. I'm going to say 45%. Gosh, why did you make me go first? 45% for Paul. (laughs) I'm saying 45. I don't know if I've ever guessed that low before. All right. Well, 
I guess seventy two percent. I know that oh, there was performance issues, but then it's Star Wars and it's Jedi yeah. and Fallen Order sequel and all that. And I went, man, you know, there's there's got to be some good here, you know, and there is for sure. So I guess seventy two percent. Um, Ryan, I hope you're not ready because you didn't win, and neither did I. The actual is fifty nine percent overall. Fifty nine, fifty nine percent overall rating on Steam. Oh my so. gosh. So that's telling uh, me 41% of people played the game that I did, which yeah. was, it, it looked like a game from 25 years ago that couldn't run well, and you you couldn't stick with it. Yeah, that that oh was my experience. Gosh. So, Paul. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Bring us Back in, on Paul. a winning streak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hit that music. Hey there, Marin. I was wondering if you had a extra heart because mine was just stolen. Sorry, Ryan. I'm Wait. taking her from you. She's mine. <laughs> what, Not with that pickup what? line. What was your guess, Paul? My guess was 45. 45? Yeah. Okay, did you so do the math wrong? Let me let me let me make sure. 45 here. to 45 59. 45 to 59 is 14 points. I guess yeah. 72. 72 to 59 is 13. 13. Points. Yeah. Oh, you, you won winner. that one, Josh. And I'm going to blame you for the board. I, just, <laughs> <laughs> I just took your word for it and rolled like, with it. Oh, don't worry. I'm ready to win this All right, one, guys. All right, DJ, DJ, yeah. roll, roll, yeah. roll back the, the record. <laughs> roll that tape. All right, Josh, let's hit that music. <laughs> Take us into the next segment. I'd like hey, to point out that this is none of this is my fault. I was going <laughs> to. <laughs> Oh, math is hard sometimes, guys. Oh, man. Okay, here we go. Hey, Marin, you want to retire to Tantalor and start a new civilization? <laughs> nice. So I think since since you guys both got to get a pickup line, I should get one, too. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> Fair enough. This is a socialist podcast. Go ahead, Ryan. All right, here we go. <laughs> hey, baby, are you from Dothamir? It's getting hot in here. You must be a witch because, baby, you... You put a spell on me. Oh, <laughs> I like the Dothamir hot in here, little Ryan there, Ryan. <laughs> For a second, I thought you were like singing a song, <laughs> busting out some rap lyrics. For Marin, I would. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, All Josh, right. since you're the official winner, why don't you tell the people what, what we're doing here? Sorry to mess with you like that, Paul. All right. This is... <laughs> <laughs> we're professionals guys really this is where i'm used we, to the intentional trolls not I the know, accidental oh, ones man. i was just well, there was something in my brain going like wait a minute wait a minute the and five then it was like, the five sounds closer I, to it four it does it does yeah. that's exactly what happened and then i was like i can't let this go because i know everybody out there is going to be like you guys didn't even realize <laughs> so i almost said 50 and i should have stuck with it yeah. oh well all right well okay so this <laughs> this is where we rate the game on a scale of make love, marry, or murder, this is where we're actually going to say, "Hey, I this is I you know I think this is just an absolutely must play game. That means it's a marry. Make love means I had a lot of fun with this. It's a good video game. I would recommend it to a good bit of people. Maybe it's not for everybody. And then murder is just stay clear. This game is not worth your time or money. We saved you the trouble of having to put yourself through that. Um." Ryan, I'm curious to hear Ryan's thoughts on this. And so and I don't want him to be able to follow Paul or I. So let's get Ryan's real take on Jedi Survivor here. Uh uh for me this one is uh, uh making sweet sweet love. Uh, it, it's it's one of those it's it was it was it would if I didn't have so much expectation and so much love for the first game, I, I would I would say I'd probably marry it, but but with what I was looking for and what they delivered, you know, without the technical issues, I didn't have those issues other than a couple. Um, for me, that's, it's, it's just going to be a, a make love. Yeah. It's all, that's all it's getting out of me. I, <laughs> I think that's fair. I, I'm, I'm, this one's, I'm conflicted on this guys because there are some strong negatives in this game to me. And I don't know if that's because I held this series in high regard. So it's almost like the more expectation you have, the more you kind of set yourself up for disappointment yeah, at the right. same time. 
And so I, there's, I have to, I have to just, uh, and I'll go through this super quick, but I have some very strong negatives. I already talked about the amount of climbing in this game. That was really off putting to me, especially when it was capped with really great moments of like parkour and traversal and stuff like that. I will say I thought the combat was way too easy. I was playing on not the absolute hardest difficulty, but the one right under that, which in Fallen Order was the perfect level of difficulty in this game. Didn't matter. I was wading through everything, man. Now, that's not to say that I didn't die occasionally, but I was expecting much more of a like tactical combat challenge that Fallen Order did have that I felt like this game somehow just missed that. Um, so I Dude, felt like the some boss fights are like 27 seconds. Yeah. And, or even shorter in some cases. It, yeah. A lot of this game is not very challenging. Well, it's funny you mentioned that because my next line is the boss fights weren't that great, in my opinion. <laughs> They're I, not. I hated the main, main boss of this game. Um, I'm not going to spoil that, but the, the actual final boss fight I was, I thought was lame. I was like, what the heck is this, man? Um, the graphics weren't really updated since Fallen Order. So I don't really know what they did there either. And then the one thing that the other thing that really bugs me is there's like three locations in this game, dude. Fallen Order had like five or six different planets that you went to that were all vastly different from each other. This yeah. game, guess where you get to go? Kobo, Kobo seven Kobo, times, Jetta. man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, Back to Kobo. Awful. Yeah. And so I just I felt <laughs> like there was a lot of laziness in the development of this game. There was one major plot point that I had a very hard time stomaching. It, and it's a spoiler. And so I, I will give you a warning that you can skip ahead about a minute on this if you want to just be extra safe. So if you don't want a spoiler, do that right now. Earmuffs. We're not starting a fraternity. Okay. <laughs> there you you play in this in this game as Seer, who is who is Cal's mentor in the first game. She's been retired from the force and as a Jedi forever. And then she fights Darth Vader. And almost <laughs> kills Darth Vader? You yeah. fight Darth Vader to literally an inch of his life. Dude, I called BS the entire time that was happening, dude. That was the dumbest segment I have ever it's seen in a video game ever, dude. Vader is bad, dude. You do not mess with Darth Vader. And you're telling me this old retired Jedi lady that hasn't been training or practicing or anything can almost kill Darth Vader? What? <laughs> You know what she would have done? The exact same as what Obi Wan did in A New Hope. It yes. would it would be over in one swing, and, and he would cut her in half. Oh my goodness, dude! I've <laughs> never I've never had a game moment enrage me like that did. Okay, spoiler over because I don't want to harp on that so much. But anyway, all that to be said, I was overall I felt disappointed in this game. Literally, that's my opinion. But that being said, I probably had unfair expectations, and this is a very very good video game. So it's one of these weird ones where personally I wasn't that happy with it, but I would recommend this game to a lot of people because I think it has a lot to offer. So I'm going to say it's a make love for me, but only because I think other people would enjoy it more than I did. That's fair. Yeah, I'm going to murder it. Uh, I, say, I don't Paul's think I'm to kill our girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't think I'm shocking anyone there after all my comments. It, it it mostly boils down to the technical issues. I think if the game ran perfectly, I'd probably fall in the make love ca category simply because I think the loot system is bad. The boss fights are not great. I do think that this game has a lot of good bones. Like I think if I went back to Fallen Order, I would probably really, really enjoy my time playing that now. And Jedi Survivor just didn't do it for me, mostly for the technical reasons. There's no way I can give it a higher score based on how bad it was, because half my time was spent reloading the game. It just made for a really bad experience. Um, I'm not even joking when I say one time my game crashed, and I just said, I'm just going to play 10 minutes of Minesweeper. <laughs> and I did that in the middle of what was supposed to be a Jedi Survivor uh, play session. So that that's about all you need to know. Oh my gosh. All right, well, we have one last segment, guys. Let's go to our leaderboard and see where this game stacks up. All right. I think most of our listeners know what the leaderboard is by this point. I feel like after three years of explaining it, uh, if you want to see it, go ahead and head over to multiplayerpodcast.com. You'll see a list of every game we've done a deep dive, and we have to decide as a three-man consensus, where do we want to rank this against all the other games that we have covered? 
Guys, we are sitting at 95 games. This is going to be number 96. Since we've got two make loves and one murder, probably not in the top half, but if we're kind of looking in the mid range here, we've got some stuff like Bro Force at 42. We've got High on Life at 52. We've got Star Wars Squadrons at 69. Wow, 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 he's a very nice. Uh, what are you guys thinking? Like, what kind of range? Where would we put this game? I. I really don't know because like I said, I I'm, don't either. <laughs> I'm disappointed in this game, but yet it's a good video game. So how do I rate, do I rate it with my, like my heart and say, well, it disappointed me. So I want to move it down. Or do I say this list is for people that might be looking for a game to play. And I would recommend this game to most people assuming that it runs, you know, at that point. But so <laughs> this is really hard for me. I am going to say that, I think it probably belongs in like the late 40s ish area for me because I look at Steel Rising, right? Similar combat structure, not nearly as cool of a world, but I think I actually had more fun playing Steel Rising, oddly enough. Yeah. You know, and so I think I'd rank Steel Rising higher than that, but then, but then there's some good games I could see like early 50s as well. So I think I'm in that range somewhere of like late forties, maybe late fifties ish somewhere in that, like that zone. That's, that's kind of where I, I know this is my first one, you know, as far as the rankings go. And, and that's what I had put down in my notes is forties and fifties um, looking over the list with you guys. But I, yeah, it was, it's one of those, if, if it was released that when it, where it worked, <laughs> it, yeah. it might've helped, but it was also, it it was, it was, it was a good game. It was fun, but you know we had such high expectations, especially after the first one, that it kind of jades you towards where you want to put it. But uh, yeah, I, I think that's definitely fair. Up probably upper upper forties. Yeah, I think if I were to rank it on my own, I would have it pretty close to sixty, which is where we have Atomic Heart. Uh, Atomic Heart was definitely a letdown, but that game ran really well on my computer. Uh, so I think Jedi Survivor has better bones than Atomic Heart, but it yeah. just ran so poorly. I, I kind of have like a similar experience. So if we're going to kind of meet somewhere in the middle, I think we're probably going to land somewhere in the, what, like 50 to 53 range or maybe just a little bit higher. I could see what, that. What, yeah. I, yeah. Honestly, that's probably a good spot. Um, 49, 50, 51. I was going to say, I would definitely, I mean, a thousand times I would say play Jedi Survivor over like Tribes of Midgard. So I I, I could make the case of putting it at like 49. Do 49 um, for Paul's pick. That's what he, that's what his number was, oh. right? <laughs> it was, was 50. it? No, 59. Oh, 50. 59. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, I think 49 for me, but I won't fuss at all if Paul's like, I'd rather have it at like 52 or 53. It's like, okay, sure. I I'm fine as long as it's underneath Rimworld. So I, I'm fine okay. with 49 if if Ryan's cool with that too. Yeah, no, that 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 number works for me. Lock it Un in. Unfortunately, it makes me sad, but yes. And and, and, and this is Go ahead, Paul. I I was going to say in the future, if we re-rank the leaderboard and this game's been fixed, we are not opposed to moving these games around. The cycle famously started out really oh, high in our so leaderboard high. and every update we kept <laughs> dropping it because the game got worse and worse and worse and we've no man's sky we've bumped it up so it's like we're not opposed to updating these things since this one's mostly technical i would not be shocked if this game moves up 10 15 slots in the future but i think right now having it around 49 is fair yeah all right cool lock it in all right, we'll lock it in. Number 49, Jedi Survivor. That means it is coming underneath Steel Rising, V Rising, Lost Ark, Among Us, and Rimworld. It will be above Tribes of Midgard, Far Cry 5, Raft, High on Life, and Killing Floor 2. I think that's it's a, a pretty spot. fair place. It is, a, yeah. it is a fair spot for it. And some people are going to be going bananas because they're going to think this oh, game's know. way better. And that's probably just because it ran really well on their system. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that wraps up our show here for today. We do want to say thank you to everyone for listening. Our next deep dive is going to be The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, which will be our very first Nintendo exclusive deep dive. I think people are really going to enjoy listening to our thoughts on that. That one should release in two weeks time, although it kind of depends on when we all finish these games and when we're ready to record. Um, but tentatively, we're thinking two weeks from now. 
Uh, as a reminder, please check out our Patreon page over at MultiplayerSquad.com so you can unlock bonus episodes and help fund what we do here and keep our lights on. We do release new episodes every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday. Make sure to hit the follow button so you don't miss any episodes. And I think that wraps everything up. Any closing words or thoughts, boys? Or are we ready to shut this one down? Uh, I, I just want to say real quick, because I'm, I'm still getting used to this whole podcast thing, but I just wanted to thank you guys for the opportunity to do this. Um, I really appreciate it. It's It's been such a blast so far, and I'm looking forward to what we can do with it. And then uh, also to, to all the fans out there, you guys are awesome. I was getting personal tags in our Discord. If you, yeah. if you guys Also, if you're listening and you're not on the Discord... Get on there. It's an awesome community. Um, bunch of really, really great people in there that, that are, that are all just chatting games and, and everything else. So, um, get on that if you're not, but, but, uh, it's been great. And, uh, thank you everyone for the compliments and, and I'm super excited. Yeah. I was going to joke and say those were all of me and Josh's <laughs> alt accounts that were tagging Ryan. Being like, no, Good listen, job, buddy. <laughs> I, I was, uh, cause I was, you know, I was on vacation when we recorded that one episode. My friend that was, we had a, another couple that we went to the beach house together with and, and he yeah. was, he was convinced that I was personally making those, those comments. <laughs> He's like, no way. Those, those are somebody you, that's you. You're just making those and commenting about yourself. <laughs> he uh, wouldn't stop so saying that. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, uh, we are excited, so excited to, have to have you. Have you. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's you've been phenomenal, and and I know the response has been really good. And like I said, we're super excited to have you moving forward and see where we can go with this thing. So, yeah. All right. Well, thanks again for joining us, Ryan. Thanks to everyone for listening. And until next time, happy gaming. See you. All right. See you, everybody. <laughs>